Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I am here at, uh, at MicroConf at The Palms. Uh, I was trying to not be bad, but I was kind of bad, so. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm here. I've got uh, Adrian here. What's up, guys? And uh, Patrick. Hi. And, uh, and these guys are, are awesome guys that have volunteered to actually like help answer some questions. So, so I've got a question here uh, from, a, from a viewer. I don't know if we're all gonna be in frame, but we'll, we'll try. We'll try, it'll be cool. Uh, I'll, 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 as we're talking, I'll like <laughs> zoom in each of us, but. Uh, so anyway, the question is basically uh, about the, the college to real world gap, which I think a lot of developers struggle with, right? This idea of, okay, so, you know, college prepares you to some degree, but then what do you do after college? Like, how do you make that transition to become a real developer to get your first job? And really, like, you know, the thing that that I'd wonder is like, how do you how do you do that without getting being a sucker? Like, because so many college graduates they come in and they they get treated, you know, lowest person on the totem pole. Like, you know, maybe you can avoid that. So, what do you guys think? Yeah. So, I mean, for for a little bit of a uh, context, I've been to school for computer science. I have a bachelor's in computer science and a PhD in computer science. And one of the things I learned in school was if you're not doing your own projects, you're not going to learn as much as you think you're going to. Because what the schools are going to teach you a very, very specific curriculum in order to get their accreditation so you could pass and you can graduate and their numbers look good. That's cool and it's a good business to be in and you're going to learn a lot in school. But if you're not working on your own projects, you're not going to develop those critical thinking skills that will help you when you're out in the real world. For example, I have a PhD in computer vision. That's com that's understanding the contents of an image. The last time you uploaded a video or uploaded a photo to Facebook, it probably not only detected your face, but tagged you as well. That's a really cool piece of software, and you'll learn how to do that if you go to graduate school or study specific parts of computer science. But how do you implement that? And how do you put that into a web framework? And how does all of that come together and fit together? So my point is that if you want to bridge the gap between the real world issues of computer science and what you're taught in the classroom, make up projects on your own and solve them. Find areas of computer yeah. science that interest you and overlap. If you're interested in web development, learn how you could do something cool with web development and say machine learning and like build a system to, to predict products to your friends that they might like by analyzing their Facebook profiles or what have you. The point is try and find something that is easily extendable, easily ac accessible like web development with a super niche topic like computer vision or machine learning yeah. and then make up your own projects and combine the two together. Awesome, awesome. And do you like this? There we go. So that is a link right there to Adrian's website. He, he runs a really awesome site, uh, PyImageSearch, PyImageSearch.com? Yep, PyImageSearch.com. Yep. And uh, yeah, so what about you, cool. Patrick? So uh, I also have a uh, ES and CS. Okay. They are not kind about that degree in, uh, among real engineers. But uh, I think one of the things that most people uh, learn the first time they get into working in industry is how different industry is than uh, what they teach you at school. At school, uh, you have some hardcore theoretic classes about, uh, for example, uh, time complexity of various algorithms. That's 95% of the time not going to be what you're going to be working on in industry unless you're working on uh, back-end teams at, for example, Google. Um, it's useful to know that an algorithm is n-squared uh, just so you don't get into the habit of doing them with huge data sets, but in real life you'll often be working with a data set of 100 items or less, yeah. in which case, case uh, asymptotic time complexity doesn't matter because your machine is a fast, fast piece. <laughs> so, um, what you'll instead be learning is how to work on a team, how to uh, operate with various tools that you're highly unlikely to be exposed to in college in the standard curriculum. Uh, for example, Git, uh, your other flavor of source control, although these days it'll probably be Git. Uh, working with databases is something that I never did uh, until actually working in industry where it's something you will be doing in probably every job you'll ever have in web development. Um, web development, for example, one of the uh, reasons I think your su suggestion is so good is because um, uh, like if you actually ship a Rails app in your college years, you're probably better equipped than 95% of college grads exactly. to actually do yeah. work that matters. Yeah, yeah. Um, for and sure. that, you know, does not have to be like a, a hardcore science of Rails app, although great if you can incorporate your higher level coursework in it. You know, even something that tracks like Magic the Gathering cards uh, will oh, actually, yeah, give you the, the, yeah. <laughs> actually give you more experience than uh, the vast majority of your peers who are just uh, taking the classes as they're offered to them. It also helps uh, bridge the gap into getting you that first job out of college. Um, B2W, like preview of coming attractions, nothing you study in school matters after two years in industry. Um, but that first two years is really rough because 90% uh, of the jobs are going to say they want three plus years of experience and you don't have it. So 
um, for getting your way into that, uh, one of the things that you can do is use the social permission you have as a student to email basically everyone in the industry and say, hey, I'm a student. This is a project I've been working on. I wonder if you have any thoughts about it. Um, you can parlay that into an internship offer. Internship totally counts as experience. You can often uh, move from an internship into a real position at the same company after you've proved that you've uh, got some coding chops and are not an axe murderer. And then, uh, uh, yeah, you can uh, use your individual projects as kind of like a friend catcher to say, hey, you know, not only good at this yet, but I'm uh, clearly working my way in the right direction and I've got some drive to me. Uh, but I should be, you know, willing to take a coffee date to, to talk about options, maybe at your firm, maybe at uh, some of your, uh, your buddies' firms, whatever, just uh, uh, are you receptive to that? And the vast majority of people are very receptive to folks who are have a bit of a go-getterness to them. And as a student, you have social permission for doing that, whereas you don't have that social permission two years later. Yeah, uh, it's really weird. Like you can totally email, you know, CEO of virtually any software company right now, and not get a circular file simply because most people are looking for uh, looking to help out students. Yeah, uh, I won't give you particular names, but you would be surprised the people who will write back. Uh, by the way, get. No, this is not does not come natural to most engineers, me included. You can see what I look like, but get comfortable with sending email to people that you have never talked to before. Uh, make it pretty succinct, like, hey, I'm a student at Blah. I'm uh, really interested in what your company is doing. I was wondering if we would have the chance to talk. It is probably like about where you want your emails to be. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm a businessman. I'm the CEO of a company. Uh, uh, responding to emails is what I do all day. So that's the same thing. In, uh, same is true of most CEOs. Uh, so don't feel like it's a huge imposition to send them an email. Worst thing that happens, they read it, eh, I don't have time for it this week. And, you know, they're not going to, like, forward it to the office with, BTW, this guy ruined his career. Uh, because nobody has time for that. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, we were just talking about it just, just a second ago. Mm -hmm. When I was first starting out in the industry, like, I had cold, cold emailed you, and you spent hours Skype talking to me and helping me. So, like, when it comes to email, Mark, or email, and just, like, saying, hey, like, you know, I'm interested in what you're doing, I'm a student, just keep in mind, What's the worst thing that is actually going to happen to you? Like, right. it, someone's gonna delete your email. Like, that's yeah. the worst thing. And just get comfortable with sending, like, as Patrick said, like, be succinct, just to the point emails. Don't take up too much of their time. Let yeah. them know what your situation is and just how they can help you and how you can help them in return. And being really specific, and that is a, uh, is a benefit. Um, I want to pick your brains is probably the worst thing you can say in an email. Yeah. Because that promises no value to the person that's on the other end of that conversation better thing to say is, you know, prove that you're a human very early in the email. Like, yeah. hey, I've liked your work on X because Y. Yeah. I would like to talk more about that. People love talking about themselves and their jobs. Like, it's a substantial portion of your being for, for folks who are operating at the high levels of the industry. Yeah. So if you say, hey, you know, I read a paper you wrote in college. It's really interesting. It dovetails with my research. Can we talk about it? You're going to get a lot of yeses to that. You won't get nearly so many yeses. It's like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Um, yeah, uh, or it, yeah, it's yeah. close, close cousin. Uh, three paragraphs of, you know, yeah, the whole life. So I was in, I was in high school, and uh, I was a little bit geeky, and uh, nobody liked me. So I decided to study computer science in college, and then uh, first year was kind of rough. Blah, blah 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 blah, and then three paragraphs later, there's no clear ask or anything. Um, again, you know, hundred emails a day. That's probably not going to be one of the five that get acted on that were not already on my plate. Whereas, you know. Nice, succinct. Hey, seems like a seems like a decent person. There's possibly some value in me helping them out, um, and it, at the very least, it'll be an interesting conversation. I'm always happy to respond to that. Cool, awesome. And again, um, <coughs> do I put up my finger? Do oh yeah, yeah. Out? I was just about to tell you. Yeah, you yep. put up your finger, and then we talk about. Uh, it's probably you want to link to Starfighter.io, yep. right? Sure. Um, you guys can also feel free to email me. Uh, nobody here can ever waste my time. I talk to anybody in the industry for any reason. Uh, my email is Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, at Starfighters with an S, dot I-O. Uh, yes, Starfighters with an S. Yep. At I-O. Okay, perfect. Awesome. I'll chime in one one bit, too, on, on kind of one thing that I would add, and you guys feel free if, uh, if you disagree with me, but uh, one thing that I always suggest, like, especially if you're just starting out in college, is the, the, the wonder of the mobile app stores means that any person can own a software company. And I really like the idea of as soon as you get into college, or even if it's even if you're already in college, start your own software company, 
put some apps in the app store, then you're doing kind of what they've mentioned with, with building an app, but you actually have a company that actually does generate revenue and it is a software company and you have software and it's software that you can show the code to. And that's a lot more impressive than some college graduate who just knows, uh, knows uh, the co end, end complexities and, <laughs> and doesn't have any real world experience. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of companies won't even really, you know, won't even dig deep enough to, 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 to think that it's just a one man shop, I mean, running a, an app store. And, and, and would they really even care? You know, a, a lot of companies probably wouldn't. They'd rather just have someone that has experience that can actually full life cycle develop an app and deploy it because so many developers today cannot actually, they can fix bugs maybe, they can like do small tasks, but they can't actually fully develop and deploy an app. So, also to uh, elaborate on that a little bit, like, uh, uh, particularly for your first couple of jobs, your resume is going to be sitting in a stack with a hundred other resumes. And, uh, people will be looking, A, for a reason to disqualify you, so make sure your spelling is perfect. Uh, yeah. But they'll also, also going to be looking for, okay, like, out of these hundred resumes that all look kind of samey, it's all a young person, they all got into computers because they liked IT uh, and playing video games, and they all have the same three activities on their resume from school. Right. Um, how, do I, how do I sift through these? And the person who demonstrated enough go-gettingness to publish something to the App Store and who consistently say here's what I learned from that experience uh, suggest that they're going to be you know pretty high quality employee when you throw them some totally random task on day one yep. uh, so yeah uh, definitely great ways to count about the crowd also I mentioned you'll be in a stack of resumes don't be in the stack of resumes exactly. cold email the decision maker get a coffee date with them and then uh, uh, try to convert that coffee date into hey you seem like a nice guy uh, if you're looking for a job we would definitely be willing to uh, to Explore that further. Why don't we like get that ball rolling such yeah. that you're not competing with a hundred people who all have the same form factor that you do on that one page, uh, uh, same same resume. Exactly. Yeah. If you're coming in with the resume, you're you're doing the wrong thing. You should be coming in with a personal connection because that's and, and I think I saw a statistic like eighty percent of jobs are hired from a referral, not from resumes. So. Yep. Absolutely. And if you can like. Tr if you're targeting a very specific position or a very specific job, not only read, reach out to the decision maker, but try and develop a little small applica application, even if it's just tangentially related to what the main product does. Show that you have an interest in what that company is doing and try and just build something small. Say like, hey, look what I built. It's similar to what you guys are doing. I admire what you're, what you're doing. I want to be involved in it as well. Just go that extra mile and show some interest. It is absolutely insane, but for people who are applying to like software development jobs at uh, companies that have an open API, 95% of applicants have never used the API of the company yeah. they're trying to get a job with. Um, like, if you're trying to get a job at Twilio, Twilio will give you $30 of free credit and it has an API you can uh, spin up an application with in less than 10 minutes. It's criminal negligence to not have a Twilio app on your resume that you're sending to Twilio, and yet 95% yeah. of people don't. Uh, same goes for anybody that has an open API. Uh, if they don't have an API, look at what their tech stack is. You know, the 15 minute Rails build a blog demo is, uh, is a good investment of your time if you're applying to a Rails shop and have no Rails on your experience at, at anywhere. I, and I'd say like, if you are gonna do the resume thing, like, like you said, using the API or, or using their, their stuff, a good ratio, like a good number, you should send out five, do, apply for five job applications a day, every day, and that should take you eight hours to do not 50 jobs in, in in one hour, right? So many people do that. Like if you're gonna do it, go research the company, go do the do the work, like get get enough information. It might, maybe even five is too many, right? If you really want quality. I'd, I'd even rather see one per day as a quota and, and you're really focusing on that company and really actually, uh, so that you, you are, it looks like you are custom tailored for that job to that company because you know so much about the company, you've researched them, you're using their stuff, you know, so that's, that's gonna make a, a huge difference, I think. If you get five coffee dates a week, you'll be hired in six weeks in this economy. Um, exactly. If you're not getting coffee dates and you're just, you know, sending your resume out and into the grinder, uh, the brutal reality is that resumes get selected out for all sorts of reasons. Some we can control, some we can't, and it's just a something that's very difficult to optimize. So uh, get the coffee dates, get the conversations with people, figure out what they want, and then uh, craft a, you know, so after you have the uh, lines of communication open with someone, it's a great uh, time to invest. Eight hours, fifteen hours, building a, a little mini app, send it in, and then immediately, you know, float to the top of their stack of candidates. And, and I say this all the time, but come on, build a blog already. <laughs> like you need to have a blog. 
uh, I'll give you the link. If you haven't signed up already for my How to Create a Blog to Boost Your Career course, it's totally free. It's an email course, but do it. Like it's, it doesn't take a lot of time and it's totally worth it and you'll learn something from it. And so, yeah, seriously, like you don't even, you know, people hear a blog and they think I'm going to commit them. But honestly, you write three essays, put them up on the internet somewhere that people can uh, uh, link to and cite. And you know, think of how much, frankly, BS work you've done over the years that went into a file folder and no one will ever see again. Yeah. Think like you know, something equivalent to the effort for uh, top twenty percent of the papers you've written, and do it three three times. Get that out there. It's a portfolio piece. You'll be able to refer to it back to the rest of your life, and you'll be shocked how much uh, interest that gets relative to you know having all your work being in a silo that no one can see which is where most people are at cool, cool. all right i guess we'll wrap it up thanks guys appreciate it oh, thank you for having having thanks for here. having us yeah and thanks everyone uh if you want more videos like this if you like this video subscribe always and i will talk to you next time take care